Hello Star Wars friends and YouTubers, Lark Biker Scott coming at you with a video. It's the first video I've made in a while, and actually September was probably my least amount of videos I've ever made on you when I since I've been on YouTube. I've just been very busy, but I should be able to be uploading some things shortly. Just a quick update before we get into the main part of the video. These are some of the things I'm planning. Hopefully I'll get on the next week or at least relatively soon. And then uh, go from there. I've got a lot of plans for the channel. I just haven't had time to implement them. So first of all, I'm going to continue on the uh, Star Wars in Order thing. I'm doing all like the comics, books, video games, whatever, in order and talking about it. So uh, like the next one in line is the Dawn of the Jedi. I only did one of those and I'm going to do more of those soon. So this is a Prisoner of Bulgan. I'm going to be reviewing this X-Wing and talking about X-Wings in general. I'm going to do talk about the 6-inch Black Series, R2-D2 in general, and also this is the thing to get. Short story. Buy this book now. If not, uh, you're not a fan of Return of the Jedi. I don't know what to say. If you, I guess uh, some people don't like the movie, but obviously I do. So... Just go and run and get that. Speaking of books, to I am going to be finishing this intro up by saying this is a Star Wars Reads Day video. I went up to Roseville, Minnesota. If you don't know, that's a suburb of St. Paul, Minnesota in the Twin Cities. And I've seen Troy Denning and Dan Wallace, who are relatively local here. They both uh, were there and they answered questions and they did a little talk about what Star Wars Reads Day is all about. I wish I just would have recorded the Q&A instead of the beginning, but the beginning is very interesting too. Um, so you'll have to see it. I did not edit anything out of it. I did not have a tripod, so it is a bit shaky. I, I, I realize that, but it's still enjoyable and you can listen to it and watch both uh, Mr. Wallace and Mr. Denning, of course. Uh, Troy Denning's book Crucible. It's really good. I should have done a review on it, but now at this point, um, there's going to be some other plans with that as far as that goes. And then Dan Wallace has been doing things like The Jedi Path and the Book of Sith and things like that recently. He'll talk about that, but here's like an example. But he's been doing Star Wars books back to their central guides in the 90s, so, um, that should be it. Uh, there's, like I said, it's not edited, so you'll, you got the entire footage I have from the event. There's other footage of Star Wars Reads Day out there, which was yesterday on the Wolfpack CCM, the Wookiee Hunt channel. I'll put you uh, links to that. One was a live show where they talked about it. I haven't watched it yet, so I can't comment on what exactly they say. So on the Star Wars Live front, um, next week, a week from now, hopefully, there'll be a Star Wars Live show on Star Wars Live. Uh, details forthcoming in midweek this coming week and that, that's about it oh also joker fett has some star wars reads day footage or comments he went to see steve sansweet and pablo hidalgo the other footage out there right now is new york comic con new york not new york comic con but new york footage and also florida footage with ashley Eckstein. so Hope you enjoy this Star Wars Reads Day footage from Minnesota, and until next time, may the Force be with you. Here with Troy Denning, and we are, uh, can you hear me okay? No, there we go. That's the right distance to the uh, <laughs> Sorry. Um, basically, uh, uh, some of you guys have been here before. We've, we've been to this location before. We've been to Star Wars Reads Day before. Um, this is the second year that Star Wars Reads Day has been in effect, and uh, it's basically a... Um, uh, big success last year. It's not just here in uh, Roseville. It's all over the country. It's actually all over North America. Lucasfilm has aligned with their various publishing partners um, like Random House and DK and Workman Publishing and a lot of other um, book sellers uh, and publishers who publish Star Wars books. Sometimes it's novels, sometimes it's nonfiction things like guidebooks, sometimes it's books for kids. But uh, all these uh, publishers have met with great success releasing Star Wars books over the last 30 years that Star Wars has been around. God, Star Wars has been around for a long time. Um, and uh, what both wh whether you're really young or whether you're old, whether you grew up with Star Wars or whether you're just getting into it, um, it's obviously a series of movies, but it's a lot more than that. Um, it's an uh, animated series, it's video games, it's comics, um, it can be, um, you know, in-person things, and it can be books. 
So from a, in sparking a love of reading, that's really what Star Wars Reads Day is all about. If you like Star Wars, there's probably going to be a book out there that you like to read about. Um, and that's why we came out here to talk about it. We can answer questions about Star Wars and talk about the process of writing with Star Wars, but we're both uh, local, we're in the area, and uh, we are Star Wars writers, and we're kind of coming at it from two different angles, which is why it's good that we're both here. I, I mostly do non-fiction Star Wars books, meaning that I do a lot of the encyclopedias, the guidebooks, the essential guides, um, and most recently I've done a, a series of sort of textbooks about Star Wars. One of them is called The Jedi Path, and the one that came out earlier this year is called uh, The Book of Sith. So it's sort of the uh, evil opposite of The Jedi Path. But the idea behind this is that if the Jedi had a textbook for how you would become a Jedi, what would that look like? Um, who would have written in it? Who would have written it? Uh, and what subjects would it cover? Um, this is the same idea, but sort of the, um, the opposite of that. What, why would the... Why are the Sith the bad guys? You know, what, what makes them that way? Would they think of themselves as the bad guys? And so it's, it's more about uh, the facts and figures. Um, Troy is coming at it from a different angle. He's a, a novelist. He's written a number of, of original Star Wars books starring the members of the main cast and what happened after the movies for Han and Luke and Leia. And um, uh, it, it, whether you get, you know, more toward this end or more toward that end, um, it, really the, the term for it is expanded universe. Um, there's more beyond the, uh, there's more to Star Wars than just the movies. If you've seen all six movies multiple times, like, like I have, uh, there's a lot more to it. There, there's probably way more than you could even imagine. More than you can possibly imagine. <coughs> so, very cool. so let me, that's just a setup, and then uh, you, uh, let you kind of go off a little bit about your role in all of this machine. Troy's been associated with it a lot longer than I have. Um, well, I used to be a, a game designer. My first job out of college was working for the people who um, published Dungeons and Dragons. Um, that was back when it was still owned by TSR. And through that, um, that was in 1981. So that's, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Just a few years after Star Wars came out. Um, but through that, I became involved in writing game product for the company who had the first Star Wars role-playing game, um, West End Games. And I wrote a book called Galaxy Guide 4, um, which uh, I had always been a Star Wars fan since I saw A New Hope, obviously. And uh, I can't remember exactly the year that came out. Do you? Uh, it was like... 89. 89, okay. Dan remembers everything. I mean, I, I, I bought it. I went down and I'm like, oh, this is great. And I bought it. And now, now yeah. we're sitting at the table. Yep. So in 1989, um, so probably in about 88, um, I was given a call by a friend who worked for the West End Publishing Company and said, hey, we'd like to, you know, I know you're a Star Wars fan. We've got the Star Wars license and we would like to have somebody write a guide to all of the creatures that are in the cantina scene in A New Hope. And, you know, I mean, being a Star Wars fan, this was just like, my jaw dropped. And I said, oh, how much do I have to pay you to do that? <laughs> um, but to give you an idea how long ago that was, they didn't have any DVDs or CDs that I could consult. The movie wasn't in the theaters any longer, so I ended up getting a copy of a VHS that was about the fourth or fifth generation copy, you know, that had been made, I could barely see the creatures in it. Um, I just had to kind of go through and say, okay, yeah, that guy was in that scene. He looked kind of like this. I just made up all the background for all of the characters, um, you know, that were in there, like the Rodians, and, and I just kind of made up their history of what, what Rodians were. And that was way back before um, Lucasfilm had even you know, had an organized program for the publishing and they were just getting going on the expanded universe. It was, I think, technically before the expanded universe was the expanded universe. But, so I wrote all this stuff up and, you know, I sent it in and I thought, okay, well, this is going to go through a lot of approvals and it's going to be, you know, a lot of changes and stuff. And it, it just came back and it was like, yep, okay. Um, and it doesn't work like that anymore. <laughs> but, um, that was a real honor to be involved with it from that time, and my, my first fiction-related projects were also for West End Games, writing a book called Jedi's Honor and Scoundrel's Luck, which were the kind of pick-a-path books 
where one concerned Luke and one one concerned Han and, and uh, a kidnapping plot where somebody kidnapped Leia while he was off playing Savak. Um, and after that, uh, came back in about 1999, about 10 years later, um, to write Star by Star, which was for the New Jedi Order, and that was my first full Star Wars novel. Um, and since then, I've written 12 full, full novels, um, and Crucible is the, the latest one. Um, I've written them um, from the time period of when Han and Leia had just gotten married and were deciding to have children. Um, I wrote a book about the decision basically to go ahead and have children, that was Tattooing Ghosts, to the point where in Crucible, Jaina is, Han and Leia's daughter, is 33 or 35 years old, and they're, they're grandparents by Crucible, so, um, well, although Jaina isn't, it was um, Jason who had the, had the <laughs> child, but, uh, so that's been a long time involved in Star Wars. It's been a great, great pleasure, a lot of fun, and discovered a lot of ground in the in the saga. And now I'm eagerly awaiting Episode Seven and to see where it goes from here. Uh, and I don't know that Dan um, gave himself enough credit because he's the guy who writes most of the stuff that like I consult. You know, I don't even I don't know how many books you've written, but it's it's got to be up there. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's quite a few. I don't know. Something. But but when I want to know something, I'll, I'll you know I'll turn to pick up a lot. My reference shelf is yeah. about the size of these shelves behind me, you know, and I'll turn to pick up um, a reference that tells me you know what the droids are like or what characters are like or or what these planets are like. And often as not, it's got Dan's name on it. Um, and I'm always fascinated by. I, if my mind is is just a running story, you know, and I, I lose track of the facts very often, very quickly, and I always have to consult, and I have to, you know, look things up a lot. Dan, it's just like, you know, I said, when is my first Star Wars book published? He knows. I don't know, <laughs> but he knows, and that's that's always amazing. Um, so I think you should take full advantage of that to ask him every Star Wars question you can today, yes. and, and see if you can trip him yeah, up, and I bet you can't. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's about it. Yeah, I was just going to add on to that with the, the idea that the whole nonfiction and, and guidebooks and things that I've been doing, um, I've been doing since the mid-90s, late 90s, um, and I was originally approached by Lucasfilm um, because I had written, just as a fan, um, I had written a, a um, document uh, called the Star Wars Planets Guide because I was so interested in what was coming out at the time, including the stuff that you had done with the Galaxy Guide 4 and Scoundrels Luck and things like that, that I was... Um, it was interesting enough to me that I created this in my spare time and I put it out on the internet which was you know the proto internet back then um, uh, you could download it from like an FTP site or something like that um, and uh, it was useful enough that it came to the attention of Lucasfilm and then they they were doing a book and offered me basically the opportunity because I'd already done the research so uh, I, on that sense I got very lucky you know, the opportunity is when luck meets preparation or something. I, I, I think I butchered that Chinese quote. But <laughs> things like Troy said, I, I worked on or contributed to probably a couple of dozen books. And um, that's kind of the lesson on that in that you can kind of hopefully pursue the passion that you like to do in reading and in writing. Maybe you, you like to write uh, or maybe you don't. Maybe you just like to read. But that's kind of what Star Wars Reads Day is kind of all about. If you're here, you're probably a Star Wars fan. Um, there's a niche. There's something out there that you would enjoy reading. Um, I would encourage you, if you like to write, to do that kind of thing. You don't have to write original story. You certainly can. If you like to write uh, stories in the way that Troy likes, and you're interested in Star Wars, you can do that in your spare time, too. Like what happened after the movies, or your own uh, version of uh, what's in your head. What I used to do was sort of take the facts and figures and make my own little encyclopedias. That's what that Planet Guide was, because it was interesting to me. Um, and uh, it, it doesn't matter, really, whether it gets published or not. I mean, it's great. You know, I love it that I'm able to do this sort of as, as a career, but I'd probably be doing it anyway, even if it wasn't. You know, that's what I was doing beforehand. I was just doing it because I was passionate about it. It was interesting to me. And that's kind of, I think, uh, the... The, the secret behind Star Wars Reads Day in general is if you like this, um, 
pursue it, you know? Um, you like the, the universe, so learn more about it. Um, read more about it. Uh, create more about it. If you're an artist, you can do your own artwork for it. If you um, are a video game designer, you could make your own stuff. It doesn't matter whether it's official or not. I think the real thing about um, Star Wars or, or whatever, whatever your passion is, is to pursue the thing that you like uh, into the other thing that you like. If you like to write, then try to match those things up. Um, because if you if you sort of talk yourself out of it, like, oh, I shouldn't write a Star Wars story because it won't get published, or I shouldn't write a Star Wars story because I should come up with my own stuff instead, um, that's fine, but if you do that and you psych yourself out because you're no longer passionate about the new thing, that's much worse because now you're not going to do anything. So always pursue the thing that you like, uh, that you're passionate about, whether or not um, you have any end goal in mind, because the act of creating is really should be the end goal it's not about the the finish line the finish line is is, is up here so um you would agree with that right yeah oh yeah and th so and that's what we've been able to do i guess uh from the two guys who have been working on star wars for a long time we're super passionate about it and everybody in this room likes the movies and i think we're all on the same page that we're in a weird transitional moment right now uh lucasfilm was sold to disney last year um and uh e even on the publishing side it's sort of like hmm, what are they going to do next right and we're kind of like a holding pattern you know i'm not really working on a new uh encyclopedia right now because for all we know episode seven uh which is going to come out in 2015 will um who knows i actually don't know uh, you don't know <laughs> we don't know we're not sure we know that we know the people who know we know the people who know i don't know that they know yet but, okay, we know the people who know the people who know. I can say that for a certainty. But uh, I, I, we, it's really up in the air. Uh, maybe this time next year, um, the movie won't be out this time next year, but this time next year we might be in a position where we behind the scenes know a little bit more, but right now it's very uh, up in the air, which I'm kind of excited about because, I, first and foremost, uh, you know, we're fans. So I'm, I'm very excited to see where this goes um, and what it means next for Star Wars. Star Wars is kind of the thing that um, never never dies. It's perpetual. Right? It reinvents itself every five to ten years. Um, and uh, with the prequels or the Star Wars: The Clone Wars, and now new movies and, and video games. Um, it's the it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> okay. Are there any questions? Uh, like a board book where uh, every time you turn a page, this is a board book like a, you know, like a kid's board book where the pages are cardboard, but every time you turned a page, it was die cut that you would un or, uh, uncover a layer of Darth Vader. So the front is Darth Vader standing there, and you, you take off the bit and some of his armor comes away, and you see what, okay, here's the components, and then you see like um, the cyborg parts, and then it goes all the way down to like a skeleton, because some of his bones are are not bones, they're, they're metal, because he had his arm cut off, right? So it was a replacement. And it was really kind of interesting to do that, and I didn't have to start from scratch, I guess. So the answer is that there have been other books written about Darth Vader, and which what does the big thing on his chest do with the buttons? You know, what are those buttons, right? Um, I wasn't the first person to have to answer that question. There were other books that did that, but what I found out was in the two to three to four other sources that tried to do those kind of things, they weren't always telling the same story. Sometimes they'd say, oh, it does this. No, 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 it doesn't. It does this. And it's like, oh, now I've got to make it all make sense. So and the first thing was finding out all the sources and trying to merge them together. The second thing was sometimes nobody has come up with a thing. No, nobody explains what this thing is. or nobody explains, How does Darth Vader eat? You know, like, oh, where does the, uh, he's got to eat something, right? Um, and so uh, coming up with reasons for that, where are the power cells, you know, does it, something powering his, his breathing, right? Um, and uh, try, where's the filter, there's going to be some sort of filter, you know, how, how often does he need to change out the air filters in the thing, right? But it, literally, <laughs> this is a level of detail that you go into. So I would say the big stuff was already out there, but all the little details is like almost, the more you get down into Star Wars, especially if you're writing a, a new setting, it's like, Nobody's really thought about this in this insane level of detail. Oh, good, I get to do it. <laughs> That's the fun part. Clone Wars, yeah.
That's probably that's disappointing because that was an interesting uh, show. But I guess in my opinion, at first I was kind of like, mm, I don't know. But I also know that because I also do some comic book things. I have written uh, books in the DC and Marvel universes, and Marvel Comics was bought by um, Disney four, three, four years ago. And under Disney's direction, they have done, you know, the Avengers. Uh, they've done a lot of things that I think are really good from a Marvel Universe standpoint. So if they can do that type of thing with Star Wars, I'm cautiously optimistic. What do you think? Um, well, I, I'm a big fan of J.J. Abrams, so once I heard that he was going to be involved, I... Um, I, did, I didn't really breathe a sigh of relief because I wasn't like thinking, oh my god, this is going to be a disaster in the first place. I was thinking, well, it's interesting. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. Once I heard that J.J. Abrams was involved, uh, I began to feel like, oh, it's going to be pretty cool. But I still have no idea what it's going to be. Um, and I don't even know anybody who has any idea what it's going to be. I just uh, feel that it will be interesting, um, fun, and... I will be thrilled if they draw on the EU to enhance it or to, to make it um, enrich it, whatever they do. Uh, I'm not sure that, that, that they're going to try to stick close to the EU you know, and, and go in lockstep. I wouldn't even think that that would be, um, might not be in the best thing because you want to make a great movie first. Um, and there's, uh, the EU is so big that when you try to write a novel in it, you know, there are like a hundred details that you really really have to lock down peg down you know where was Han on this date where was Han on that date you know can he actually get from this planet you know where he was in this story over here to where you want him in your story in the two weeks he has you know I mean there's that insane amount of detail so I'm just kind of waiting and, and I'm very optimistic uh, looking forward to some great stories I've I've uh, have my own idea about what the, the you know they should be about, but I won't share that. <laughs> so, um, next question. Um, I've heard that the you know that people like my editors at, at uh, Lucasfilm haven't even seen the script yet, um, and I don't think that that'll be changing for a couple months or so, and they just won't know that until they see the script. Um, so. I think, you know, I'm just, this is a fanboy guessing, this is me as a fan guessing. My guess is, is that probably they will lift what's useful out of the EU, and um, then it will continue to exist in, in that form. But I doubt that they will write themselves in, in um, view the EU as a straitjacket, and allow it to shape the movie, just because I think that, you know, they, we, need, we want them to have the freedom to do the best possible movie they can and so so my personal hope is is that you know they use the EU as a resource but don't feel straight jacketed by it um, but the honest to god answer as far as I know is is that nobody knows yet for well I haven't read Kenobi yet but I'm really looking forward to it um, yeah I, I think that that's supposed to be good um, I'm trying to think back to what I have read you know, I, I'm having a hard time. It's a night or not, night or not. I, I'm sure that it's good. But, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Brian Wood's Star Wars comics. I don't know if yeah. Yeah, stuff those, like that. Those, or, I, uh, yeah, Brian Wood's Star Wars comics are, are good. On the comics front, the the one that just came out was um, I I just find it really intriguing. It's an interesting idea. Uh, Lucasfilm authorized a comic book adaptation of the George Lucas's original rough draft for Star Wars, it's a comic book series called The Star Wars, because that was the original name of Star Wars, was The Star Wars. And um, uh, he wrote a story that was very different, you know, it had sort of an Anakin, and it sort of had a Luke, but they were very different, and the, the setup was completely different, the plot was completely different, and then he eventually abandoned that draft, and he wrote the one that we all know from the movies, and uh, um, as a really interesting curiosity, they are publishing it now, the first issue just came out, um, an adaptation of that, so it's almost like a um, alternate universe, uh, parallel universe. What if uh, this was the movie that ended up getting made, and this is the comics adaptation? It's very, uh, it, it's fun. It's a really fun to experience that kind of thing. Sort of a most dangerous game knockoff, but the uh, the the thing that was trying to kill him was the, the was that creature. From the thing. 
So that's my answer. You, you can't beat that. There's no way you can get more obscure than the Florin Lamprey. Did I sit um, again? No, I probably couldn't get more obscure than that, although I could t mention the Duin the Oh, yeah, the, yeah, the, star the, the Star Dragons. Yeah. Um, but my favorite is actually the Squibs, uh, which I've uh, written some, some Squibs into a couple of uh, stories, um, the Darkness Trilogy and Tatooine Ghost. Um, I just like these little con artists. Um, these little furry kind of uh, rat, uh, rabbit, rat, rat, rabbit creatures. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're little, little con artists who um, cause Han and Leia a bunch of trouble by uh, convincing them to do things that really aren't all that smart. So. Work. Um, I wasn't there for the original story meeting for the New Jedi Order, um, but I was there for um, a mid-course kind of, I wouldn't say correction, but mid-course consolidation. And uh, uh, it, it works basically, you get the writers, the editors, uh, some marketing people, um, some executives, um, a, a whole lot of people around a big table. Um, and you just start generating ideas and tossing out ideas about, well, this story is going to be... Well, usually you have some idea what's going on. But um, the story is going to be about, you know, in the New Jedi Order. Um, you know, I don't think I should talk about that one because I wasn't there at the beginning. And I've heard various versions of how they actually developed the, the initial concept for it. But in the middle of it, we just got together and we were talking about, okay, this is uh, where the story is going. And you start generating plot points which is, you know, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. And everybody will just say, okay, well, if that happens, then this has to happen, and, and then this has to happen. And you're kind of writing them down, jotting them down, you're recording it. Um, and then you take all those ideas and kind of divide them up into, well, this seems like this should belong in one book, and this should belong in another book. And uh, usually the, you'll know which author is going to write which book based on when they're available. Um, and so it kind of ends up being uh, assigned that way. Um, but it uh, doesn't happen for three months, you know. Usually what happens is you get together for um, about a day and a half of really intense brainstorming. And then you go back and you write, um, somebody will write down everything that was developed and send it around, circulate it. Then people will um, add their memory of their recollections, their ideas, and circulate it back. And then once that's done, each author will write an outline based on, you know, based on what the plot points were. They'll write an outline for their first book, circulate that around, and once that's finally everybody kind of agrees on that, then you have your outline to start the story. And um, the really cool part about doing that is, is that the first time I did it, I got to see Skywalker Ranch. Second time I did it, I got to see Big Rock, and the third time I got to do it, I got to go to the Presidio, which was so I've seen. I think all three of their main headquarters through being involved with that. And that was really the coolest part. And, 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 and their lunch programs, they, they have the most amazing cafeterias at all of those places. Uh, I was in the middle of, because it was announced, uh, writing the new Central Guide to Characters. Um, it's been kind of, you know, paused, I guess, uh, right now because of the movies. 